pull it up and see if I can see it. All right, it is looking like it's alive. Welcome, everyone. We're uh, just kicking off Bolts and Bites. Um, you might already notice this isn't Fatima here. Um, we've got a special guest today, but you'll hear more of that when we officially start. We'll give a minute or two for people to join. Um, in the meantime, um, sit here as we finish prepping and uh, let a couple more people join in. Um, but we've got an exciting show for you today. Don't have the cool um, stream starting soon overlay. Um, so if you don't see that, that would be why, but uh, we'll be starting very soon. Yes, this is the grassroots underground version of Bolts and Bites. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you find out that really Fatima is the glue that holds the entire show together. Um, but thankfully, I have no doubt that uh, my fellow co-host uh, will, will pull his weight today. All right. Yeah, I don't weigh that much though. So that's the <laughs> problem there. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'm seeing if uh, our viewer numbers are going up. So we can go ahead and kick things off here. So uh, welcome to Bolts and Bytes. This is our live stream production. Uh, it's brought to you by Pantheon's developer advocacy team um, on this weekly series where you're going to share what's new in open source communities, as well as updates on some of the stuff we're working at here at Pantheon. Yeah, and we'll also be chatting about events, developer tools, and spotlighting our community. And at the end of the show, we'll share a collection of links to all the things that we talked about. Uh, sometimes we give things away, so you should come hang out with us every Thursday at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern, or you know, where, wherever, whatever time that is, wherever you're at. And we're also going to be talking about board games today. I'm super excited about that. Yes, me too. Uh, so our intros. Hello, I'm John. And I'm also John, to confuse the situation. <laughs> and uh, we both work here at Pantheon. Um, I'm John Richards, uh, and I'm on the developer advocacy team. But my uh, guest host here today with us, John Wynn, uh, also known sometimes as Board Game John, um, is on a different team at Pantheon. So can you share a little bit about um, what you do here at Pantheon? Yeah, so I'm on the onboarding team. Uh, my role is to do some initial setup and configuration for some of our contract customers here at Pantheon, and uh, basically acclimate them to the platform, teach them how to fish, make sure that they're comfortable doing uh, working in our spaces and doing what they do so that they can launch their sites with confidence and uh, maintain them to uh, in an optimal fashion. But uh, yeah, that's, that's me, also John. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh, you may have also seen John helping out the developer advocacy team at Office Hours many times, sharing his knowledge there. So always uh, a good friend of ours and uh, helping us do what we do. So thank you. Um, and I'm excited because John Wynn has a, uh, our, is doing our tech showcase today. So um, you've got a tool there that uh, seems like it will be helpful. So I'd love to hear more about it. I just realized, let me know if you don't have permissions to share. I'm going to you have to up to a co-host. And here we go. Yeah, this is what happens when you guest host on Bolts and Bytes. They put you to work right away. <laughs> um, so I've got, this is, so my background is I used to be, uh, uh, many, many moons ago, I used to be a graphic designer and then I became a front end Drupal developer and then uh, a technical project manager. And this is, I, I, there's some iteration of the this Chrome extension that I'm going to uh, be demoing like some version of some this type of functionality I've, I've used in like all of those roles in all of the places that I've worked. Um, it's, it's something that it's called go full page. And then it, what it does is it takes a uh, like a, a air quotes around this screenshot of the browser window that you're that you're in. So, you know, uh, like a common use case of this would be, uh, you know, we'd, we'd send out a, a comp of, uh, of something to uh, a client. They say, yeah, that looks good, right? And then we implement it uh, on the front end. And they're just like, you know what? That doesn't, that actually doesn't look right. And it's just like, well, let me take a screenshot of this and put it right on top, overlay it right on top of the the, uh, the comp that we sent you. And it's just like, yeah. So you see like, yeah, that's probably like, maybe you're technically right. And it's like, it's 99% there, but this is one pixel off. Like, is that, is that the deal breaker? And they're like, oh, okay. No, I guess it is, you know? Cause sometimes, you know, our mind's eye, especially in uh, in hindsight is not, is not wholly accurate, right? Uh, but a cool thing about this is like, so sometimes I think like, if you try to, I'm sure there's some people who like just take a screenshot, right? And this is go full page their their actual, um, their actual website for it. But it's like, it goes on like kind of for days, right? So if you take a screenshot, it's kind of just like 
this one top part. And sometimes if you do something like if you uh, try to print it and save it as a PDF or something like that, um, uh, you know, th that doesn't work all of the time because the website could be configured in a certain way where, you know, it's just like, well, let's strip out the CSS or whatever. So this is, I found, has been uh, super helpful in that. So you install this little full page plugin and then you just click this little camera icon and then it does a little Pac-Man thing where, uh, oh, normally there with the little dots, there's a Pac-Man that goes walk, 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 and gobbles everything up and acts as a progress bar. But yeah, so you can see now this is, this is the whole full page. This is a screenshot that we're looking at that I'm scrolling down that essentially it's effectively it's the same thing. So from here, you can download it as a PDF, you can download it as an image, and um, you can also edit it if you want to uh, uh, pay these fine people lots of, uh, or I don't I shouldn't say lots of money, but some amount of money uh, that I'm not uh, uh, I'm not sure what that price is because I'm super frugal, so I can get away with using free stuff. I mean that's why I'm an open source, right? <laughs> Probably, uh, but yeah, you can do some stuff like uh, uh, crop things, uh, add, add stickers, shapes, special effects to it. Uh, for me, that's that's more than what I need it for. Usually I just download that. Um, and if there's something where uh, I need to crop it or something, I take it to image editing software that I have uh, instead. But yeah, so that's something where like everywhere I've gone, everywhere I go, I, I, this is one of the first Chrome extensions that I um, uh, install into my browser. Just because it invariably, like in uh, my roles at Pantheon, it's it's been uh, helpful for like uh, support e type things, right? Or it's just like, well, what are you are you seeing this? This is what I see, and it's like, can you validate that this is also like what's going on and what you expect? And yeah, so let's let's go full full page. I'm really excited that you shared this. Uh, I've been looking for something like this. I had one long ago. I'm trying to remember if it was like feels like it was like six, seven years ago. And then shortly after this came out, uh, somebody patented whatever technology it was in the extension yeah. I was doing, using had to be taken down. And I've been like looking for one since, and most of the ones I, I get have, have tried have not worked well. So um, this is really handy. As you mentioned, you know, the um, if you've got uh, print style sheets that change it, it doesn't work well. Um, I really like being able to, to do this. So I'm going to have to go grab this extension. Um, I love the idea here, being able to grab the whole page. As you said, you can mark it out up elsewhere. Instead, I've had, I've had like taken multiple screenshots and then try to like line them up in my image editor. So that yeah. like, there's no seam. It's really annoying. And so, um, the fact that there's a, a nice, easy plugin to use here. And this, if you're looking for the link for it, will be in, uh, I think about the, the tweet, but it will also be in uh, our link list at the end if you want to check that out. Yeah, and I just ran another one real quick and you can see it's super fast, super easy. And there was a flash of the Pac-Man. I guess this is this page is just a, it loads so quick that it, it doesn't uh, need to show the full part progress bar. But all I did was increase the text size and then write. So this is representative too of like basically exactly what you're seeing. And like, well, again, with the, like you were saying, uh, uh, when I mentioned like previous iteration, I've used previous iterations of this, not necessarily previous versions of Go Full Page, but pre like previous uh, or um, other extensions that have the similar types of functionality. And this one seems to work the best. Where like if I did this on something else, it might have like maybe resized it or like you know like interpreted the data in another way. But this is pretty much like one to one, apples to apples. What I'm seeing is what I'm sending, and uh, it hasn't like knock on knock on wood. Like it, it's been around for a while, hasn't gone away yet. But I was in the same boat as you, where uh, you know there was something that I used. Where this one is specifically for Chrome, but I think there's one I used to use before that was both for Chrome and Firefox. And then like it just went away, you know, it disappeared into the ether. Or like there's another one where just for some reason it stopped working. But yeah. <laughs> one of the ones I had always blurred the like it did couldn't connect the images oh, yeah. together well. And I was like, this looks so bad. I can't use this. So yeah. Thank you very much. Great technique there. Also, anybody listening, if you have cool tools or extensions um, that you like to use, let us know. We'd love to highlight some of those. All right, uh, next I wanted to give a little uh, Pantheon update. So uh, WebOps 21 Pantheon's uh, industry summit uh, just finished up yesterday. So if you didn't check it out, there were two full days of content and speakers. Um, if you're interested in knowing more, maybe you missed it. Um, there is going to be a nice wrap up page that's going to be coming along. It's not up yet at the moment. If you want, you can actually still register. It's a little late to attend the sessions, but you will then be on the list that has the email for the recordings and things like that. If you want to follow up um, one highlight, I wanted to pull out one of our, our like keynote speakers was Jose Andreas. Um, 
Um, and I really loved his uh, quote that he, he shared with us, kind of his, his motto, if you will, of building longer tables, not higher walls. And as somebody who enjoys food a lot, and especially food with friends, um, as a way to get to know people. Um, anyway, I liked it. And I'm going to use that uh, or steal that a little bit and definitely try to have uh, more people at the table. So um, definitely worth checking out some of those sessions, some really good content coming out of there. Yeah. And next up, we have uh, Calling All DrupalCons. Uh, and we have uh, upcoming events are Drupal GovCon in October th from October 13th to October 15th. But next week, we have DrupalCon Europe. And that's going to be uh, for everybody stateside. That starts at like midnight Pacific on, uh, on Monday. And uh, we have a few people from Pantheon, uh, some Pantheors who are going to be representing us there. Uh, one of them is John Richards. Uh, we also have um, uh, Katie Richards, Drew Gorton. Sarah Frui, uh, Fatima, who would normally be here, uh, but it takes two Johns to replace her, and Steve Persh. And uh, yeah, so some, some of the topics that we'll be covering in the sessions over there are um, talking about how to uh, foster community uh, by Katie. Uh, Drew is going to talk about uh, websites as a team sport and trying to find alignment and success there. He's also going to be talking with Sarah Frui about uh, how to win big by uh, leveraging new offerings at Pantheons for your for your agency, and uh, Fatima has something that I think is uh, maybe the most fun named session. It's uh, the the sorceress's spellbook, uh, developer tips and tricks, and uh, the Steve Persh is going to be covering the hierarchy of needs of high performing teams, and John is going to be speaking on focus or uh, with a focus on projects that matter. So uh, lots of things going on. We're going to have a more in-depth episode of Bolts and Bytes that are covering uh, some of those things more in more detail next week. And uh, yeah, is there, is there anything that you have to add to that, John, since you'll actually be in attendance for that? Uh, Unlike myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so two things that I would add. One is, you know, um, the theory out on why Fatima isn't here is that she's actually locked up in her sorceress's tower working on uh, that spell book. So um, if that's probably where she's at, I would assume, as a, as a, a powerful sorceress. Um, and then the second one is, um, I feel very fortunate, since this is virtual, that I lucked out with an 8 a.m. session. Um, if you are attending these, I would just encourage you to go check it out. It's worth setting your alarm. Some of these will be very early in the morning, since it's in an a European audience. But um, the sessions are really good. They're worth checking out. Um, we'll have a lot of presence at different areas. And then um, I guess I said two, but that was uh, a lie. There's 50% more. There's three. Uh, the last one, is next week. Um, well, I won't be here, but Fatima and one of our co-founders, uh, Matt Cheney, will be here with a special DrupalCon EU-focused episode. So um, you should definitely check it out. If you're going to be at DrupalCon, uh, they're going to have do some fun giveaways. There's going to be some exciting stuff. So um, check us out next week um, if you are all about that DrupalCon. Yeah, that's 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern. And if you want to check out DrupalCon Europe stuff, uh, if um, in order to uh, finagle the time zones. If you log in, if you go to the sessions uh, or to, to the schedule page, log in with your Drupal uh, user ID and it will adjust everything to your current time zone. So you don't have to do a lot of mental math. So that's, that's super helpful. Thank you, John. All right, and now we're gonna call all WAPUs. Why is that, John? There's uh, WordCamp US is tomorrow. <laughs> yes, so excited um, for this. Let me, I'm going to share my screen here real quick. So, and to show us a little bit of the schedule for um, what's going on here. Oh, I'm not on, I'm on the home page. Here we go. So we're looking at the schedule here of what's coming up. Um, it is one day only. So just tomorrow. Um, so go check it out. There's some great talks coming up. Um, I know Joe Binder is a great presenter and this looks like an excellent talk. Um, and always looking to know more about um, Gutenberg blocks. So, uh, so many good, great, or so many good presenters here. Two others I wanted to call out our hero, Amy June, is going to be talking about contributing to open source. So, if that's something you're looking to be able to do more often, or maybe you've never done it at all and you want to figure out how do I get into contributing to open source, you should check out her talk. And then, uh, because um, I've had a chance to work with the team over um, on the, the training team uh, for WordPress, I was super excited to see that the head of the training team and some others are going to be getting together to talk about the future of learnwordpress.org. Uh, it's a really 
really nice tool if you're getting started in the WordPress space uh, for learning WordPress um, and they're looking for all kinds of feedbacks on ways to make that better. So um, that's one of the other talks that I'm like really hoping to catch tomorrow. Yeah, th things that jump out to me that look like really in like interesting or the types of things that I'm interested in it is one one is that 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 Joe Binder talk of like a not an overnight leader, a celebration of my 10 years of being empowered by WordPress, because I always think it's interesting to see how people get to where they're at right like. Um, so uh, in between, I mentioned before I was a graphic designer, front-end developer, at, and yada, yada, yada. In between all of that, like I was actually, I graduated as a communications major, which uh, doesn't really directly translate to tech at all. Um, and, you know, I was, I was a waiter for seven years. And I think like there's a lot of like, there's a lot of skills that I picked up and learned through just like the, the service industry that are still like applicable and like have helped me through and get to where I am right now. So like, I'm always super interested to hear about like ever, other people's paths and journey. And then, um, yeah, recharging your social battery in the age of online events. Um, at 12.45 PM Mountain is showing for me. Is That's one that is also of uh, interest to me in terms of, uh, I think like that's, that's very topical, right? Like we're all going through that right now, but most of the things that I think I've seen have been oh, just like, hey, how do we combat Zoom fatigue, right? And it's very, it's very kind of like work focused, work oriented, work centric. And this seems like it's it's a different angle on that, right? Which might like give give a new perspective uh, on things, and you know, make make you you think about or consider things that you haven't uh, that that you have you haven't thought about before, you know? Absolutely, I love it. Yeah, thanks for calling those two out. Uh... I'm on, uh, need lots of recharging. So uh, yeah, perfect. All right. Well, hopefully you'll be checking out WordCamp US tomorrow um, as it is live. Um, up next, we have some celebration. So um, if you're um, not posting in our Workout Loud thread, you should be because we like to pull wins and uh, exciting news from there. Um, this week, um, sadly, one of my coworkers was uh, not feeling well. Well, actually, last week. Um, and so a couple of people have been dealing with colds or COVID, things like that. And so there was some great advice in there on um, things to do to help yourself feel better. And one of my favorites was some talk around tea. And so our friend Chris called out that he likes cinnamon tea, something he acquired a taste for when he was visiting Sri Lanka. Um, and so he recommended a, a good cinnamon tea um, and a spiced tea as well. If you like more flavor and sweetness, um, I'm a big tea fan as well. If I'm not feeling well, I like to kick back with uh, sometimes with a herbal rooibos. Uh, sometimes I want to kick back with just a, a, a nice black tea. I, I usually hit up uh, some iced tea. In fact, I have some um, iced tea here that I got from McDonald's this morning um, to kickstart my day. Uh, so uh, that's my tea experience. John, I know you kind of have a unique perspective on tea, uh, on, on a specific time and place for you. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if it's a, a unique perspective, but it's something where it's, uh, so I'm the type of person, like if I go to a McDonald's or something, like I have my one order and that's what I do like every single time. Like that's how, like kind of how I eat. It's just like, oh, do you want to try something else? And like, I'll try everything, but I'll land on the thing that I, that, that it's just like, oh, that, that's the way. And then like, I just keep down that path. And, uh, like, so, uh, kind of, uh, in that, in that same sentiment, uh, tea is something that I only really ever drink when I go to eat dim sum. So like that is, uh, right. That's, um, Chinese a la carte. Uh, usually like people will go like, you know, on, on the weekdays for, for a matinee eating where they push around little carts, then like, you know, you pick and choose, uh, what, what you, what you want to eat. And it's something where like when I was a kid, that was the only time that I ever drank tea. So it was something where, uh, it, it's usually typically it's Jasmine tea. Uh, I think I went to a place in, um, in Oakland once they have chrysanthemum tea and I was like, Oh, what is that? Uh, it would be like, it's like, it's so customary to me where it's just like, I have to have jasmine tea when I'm eating dim sum the same way, like someone might need to have like milk with cookies. And when I had a chrysanthemum tea, it would just be like, I might as well be like dipping a chocolate chip cookie into a glass of water. Like that's what it was. I was just like, this is what, like, I can't, like, I gotta go. I, I feel like I gotta go somewhere else. Uh, this, this isn't right. Like the taste buds aren't aligning, right? Like when you bite into, uh, you bite into a chocolate chip cookie and, oh wait, no, it's raisin. It's not that there's necessarily anything wrong with raisin, but like, you know, that's not what you're expecting. Or that's not what you wanted. That's not what you were here for. I'm here for dim sum and jasmine tea. Uh, so <laughs> that, that's the limit and extent to my, my tea drinking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It reminds me, it used to be like the only time I ever drank, um, 
tomato juice was when I flew um, oh, I got yeah. that from, my, from my dad. And then, uh, so anyway, yeah, I started like, oh, okay, well now suddenly I'm up for tomato juice, even though I don't. Yeah. And I wonder, like my most conception of tomato juicy things is, uh, is tomato soups. And, uh, I had some gum surgery. I have like a condition where like my gums like overgrow. And so like every now and then I have to get like the faceless face, face lift equivalent. Uh, of whatever that procedure is on my gums where like they cut it away they pull it up they stitch it up and then it's just like I'm eating I'm eating mashed potatoes and ice cream for like a week but uh one time I went through and I was like I'm gonna get soups I went through the soup aisle in the grocery store and I was just like there's a bunch of tomato soups I'm just gonna get every single one of them and see which one I like best and um it's something like yeah I maybe I just don't have the palate for it maybe that's why I stick to like it's just like this is my this is my order at McDonald's and that's what work that's what works and that's what we're doing uh but like I was just like yep green tomato soup yep that's tomato and it's just like like this one's like an orange tomato soup and it's like yep that's tomatoes and uh yeah maybe maybe that's why I am the way that I am <laughs> I don't have a refined palate I would be horrible a horrible wine taster probably <laughs> or or you know very much what you want um yeah. All right. Well, we are getting close to our end, but we are now hitting our exciting topic. Well, we had many, but this one's near and dear to my heart. So next week, um, I'm going to be out. Uh, I won't be here. And I will. That's why uh, we have um, Matt Cheney coming in to speak uh, cover for me. But where am I going to be? I'm going to be at St. Louis's Equal to the West, which is a board game retreat here in St. Louis. Um, we've got the organizers are taking a lot of great precautions. Uh, so I feel pretty safe doing this. Um, but I love board games. And actually, that is how I met John Wynn. Um, when I started, um, I, I think uh, like I had just started. We have a, a, a mutual friend who likes board games. And apparently he put the word out and I got a message from John like, hey, I heard you like board games. Um, and so we've been fast friends ever since. I love it as a way to get to know people. Um, and so, John, I would love to hear a little bit about um board games from you i know um you you like to uh, john's given a talk before about board games and i think uh project management um and so i like the way you relate games to things about your work so uh what do you have for us today yeah so uh yeah that talk was with our mutual friend who may or may not be david needham who is the special <laughs> who was here last week so yeah and uh, yeah, when I joined Pantheon, I think there was only other one one other John that was working. And so the moniker that he gave me within the uh, the Pantheon community or Drupal community was very like applicable or easy then because uh, he it was uh, there are a bunch of people who just know me as Board Game John. They have no idea what my last name is. It might as well not exist. Uh, but when you joined, uh, it was something where it's just like, oh yeah, Board Game John doesn't work now because we both play board games. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I always uh, my a friend of mine. Uh, Chris Shattuck from Build a Module uh, calls me a board game DJ because I'm always trying to find different ways to relate board games to people, right? Similar to how, how I try to get people to read comic books, where it's just like, oh yeah, Batman, Superman, like it's just like, oh, that's not really my, that's not really my vibe, right? But it's just like, no, it's just, it's like, it, it's a, it's a medium for like, com, like expressing ideas, and there are different things that you can. That, that different things that you can accomplish through this medium. It's not just superhero and tights. So the same way uh, that talk about like better project management through board games was being like, hey, yeah, it's not just, you know, it's not just Monopoly. It's not just sorry or go fish, right? Here are some things like you can actually learn life skills through through uh, that. So that's a, that was a talk at that camp. And uh, yeah, I think we can we can link to, link to that in the, the show notes after if yeah. it's already there. But um, yeah, today for today, I wanted to talk about since we're, uh, you know, we were talking about, you know, DrupalCon uh, EU and and WordCamp, and we work in that space of uh, open source. Uh, I wanted to talk about games that are mod that are modular, or like things where you like you go and like similar to how like you know you you start with the base WordPress site, you go in and you put a lot of plugins, and at the end of it, you have something totally different, right? You have something that's custom and tailored towards what your needs are. So I wanted to, uh, yeah, make a lesson, talk about some some modular games that are like that, where uh, you're able to attack on things. And it's not just like, it's an expansion to the game where it's just like, oh, here's here's more, right? But something where it feels like you're doing different, something entirely different or providing a completely different experience and not just having like, here are some different options because the configuration is different, right? So Settlers of Catan is a, a very popular game, right? Some people would argue probably maybe that's a, that's modular in terms of, or the base game is just like, well, the, 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 
the the board is the same is different every time you play it right but it's just like but functionally you're doing kind of the same thing at least with the base game right over and over again so i'm not talking about anything that's like that or something with uh, uh john's favorite game dominion or or uh, smash up is one that he brought up and i'm going to be saying a lot of game names uh that uh, i'm not going to go into details with them if you if you'd like to i'd love to talk about this stuff uh, at, at length at nauseum uh you can email me at win win at pantheon.io uh but when i actually go into the ones that uh, i want to highlight I'll, I'll explain some of them more in detail so you're not completely lost but hopefully you can just google some of these uh but yeah so uh, Smash Up is a, a game that John brought up, where it's like, you consider this to be modular because the way that that game works is you take two different card decks, you smash them together, and then you and then you play. And then so John takes two different ones, and then we go, and it changes the, the setup of everything. But uh, for me, like functionally, you're still kind of doing the same thing. And it's more like for that, you're just like, oh, that's that's an interesting interaction between these cards. But still, the framework is pretty much the same, right? So. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, or, and something uh, that mo a module is a term that is used a lot prevalently within board games a lot. So there are uh, storytelling games like um, Chronicles of Crime, where you're, where you're solving like usually a murder mystery or time stories where you're doing a quantum leap thing where you're going back in time and trying to change an outcome. And so you just take a different expansion, you plug it into the, that system. And then um, uh, that's not the type of module that, that I, I want to be talking about today here. And so uh, before we get into my list, let's see, I have some uh, honorable and dishonorable mentions maybe, uh, where uh, I tried to keep this to limited to things that I actually play and enjoy. So there are things that I know about that I haven't been privy to. So I feel, I feel very facetious saying, yeah, this is a great one because I haven't, I haven't uh, uh, experienced it myself, but like Catan is a good one where it's just like, there are tons of expansions that are out there and, uh, it can be a modular experience, but I've never experienced because I actually don't like, uh, the, the base game of Catan very much. Uh, so feel free to, to at me and, and, and throw an email, uh, to win at pantheon.io and tell me why I'm wrong. If, uh, if you're a great Catan fan, because I know there are lots of them, but there's a game, uh, Splendor that I enjoy a lot that had, has a bunch of modules in it in an expansion that you can mix and match to a certain extent. But I actually, I actually don't like those modules, uh, most of the modules. So uh, other honorable, like from, so from the dishonorable mentions to honorable mentions, uh, Scythe is a grandiose game that has lots of modules. My understanding is the modules change the experience a lot. And uh, I don't know if that's something, the one that you played, uh, John, uh, with the different modules, because I think there's one that there's something that adds, it changes it from a competitive game to a co-op experience. And it adds in like a campaign where uh, you can play like, you know, uh, games that have like, uh, I believe it's uh, like sort of like a legacy effect in terms of what you do in one game affects what happens in another game. It absolutely does, but it is not cooperative. It's still competitive, um, but the campaign is great. Well worth checking out. Yeah. And then there's a game that you and I have played uh, 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 a number of times now and one of your absolute favorite games, uh, Spirit Island. You can probably talk a little bit about how that is, where it's like, there are modules there. I've never played them because it's uh, it's such, an, uh, uh, it, there's so much going on in just the base game of Spirit Island. I've never, I haven't been able to ascend to the levels of play where modules are introduced because usually when I play with someone, it breaks their mind. Uh, it breaks my mind a little bit too, but I guess maybe I'm not masochistic in that way. Uh, but uh, have you experienced a, a lot of those? Um, I, I've experienced a few, but yeah, it's a it's a great game. The, the challenge is, is like almost every time you play it, you have a new person and you're like, I don't want to overlay this in. So as you think about modular, if a game is already super complex, sometimes you don't need those modules to add a lot more. Yeah, and there's so many different in that you are, it's like reverse Catan where you uh, there, are, there are people who are trying to colonize your land and then you're playing as spirits who are trying to uh, to disperse them. And there's so many different options of spirits to play where it's like, I've never had to dig into that extra module layer. Um, and uh, yeah, speed routing through the rest of the honorable mentions. Uh, Railroad Inc. is a dice rolling uh, game where you draw like little maps onto uh, like train tracks and maps onto uh, a, a little whiteboard. And uh, I know you can you can add lots of different dice to that that change up the experience. Uh, I, I've only, I haven't been privy to any of them, 
uh, Pandemic is a game that uh, many people are familiar with, uh, maybe not seeing as much playtime uh, uh, recently uh, because it hits too close to home, but that is my uh, my best girlfriend's Nikki's favorite game. So I own and have played more Pandemic expansions than I care to, but there's lots of different ones where uh, that plays up, like where, uh, where different diseases come from, how, how you actually um, cure them. And uh, last, the last honorable mention is uh, Carcassonne. So that's just like a tile laying game where you go and it's kind of area control, but there's, I know that there's modules that different that, like a, a dragon to it or like different, uh, different uh, economy into it. So, okay. So now onto the, the list of things that I actually played and enjoyed and I'm going to, to recommend. Uh, so the first one is uh, called uh, Two Rooms in a Boom. So this is a social deduction game. I don't know, John smiled, so it seems like he might be familiar with it. So this is like a hit and roll game that is uh, sort of like a, you know, a werewolf mafia. Those are things that people are uh, aware of a lot or like the resistance. And that is, uh, it's it's something where usually with these types of games, there is a, uh, there people have hidden roles. Some of them are good guys, some of them are bad guys and you don't know, it's your job to figure it out. That's the whole game. And uh, so there's elements of modular play and, each one of those types of games, depending on like if you're if you have an excess of roles, where you're able to shift things up, switch things out, and then change the experience. Two rooms in a room has that in spades, where it's just like there's there are dozens and dozens of roles. Like if I said like I I, uh, I would guess like I'm probably like at least at least like fifty or sixty, uh, like if that, or at least that's what it feels like. And it's a differentiating factor between two rooms in a room and uh, other hidden roles games is if you're a werewolf, John. And in the werewolf game, you don't tell me, like, I never know, right? It's your job to kill me. And I just, like, I'm trying not to get killed. So in Tyrion's in a Boom, you have a card that identifies who you are. You're either on the blue team or on your red team. And it tells you what your role is, like what you're trying to accomplish. At a high level, it is, there's one person who's a bomber and there's one person who's the president. And one, the bomber team wants the bomb at the end of the game, the bomber to be in the same room as the president. And, um, and this, uh, you are able to show what your role is to another player. So at that, that, that's what it is at, at its core, but it really shines when you start throwing in different roles. And it's like, they have, there are lots of like interesting and silly roles where like there's a role that is the clown. So in addition to either being on the red team or the blue team, you have to smile the whole entire game. So that's part of what your card says. You have to smile the whole entire time. Or there's a, a shy guy that says, uh, you can't show anybody else your card. So uh, at, you, you know, the, the core of the gameplay is usually like you say, hey, John, do you, do you want to show me what team you're on? Uh, if you do, I'll show you what, what, what uh, team I'm on and like what my role is. And so it can be something where you're going through, going around, you're going and doing this. And then suddenly John shows me that he is the clown. And it's like, oh, he has to smile the whole entire time. So now I'm going around and I'm looking and saying, like, who else is smiling the whole entire time? Because there's a clown on our team and there's a clown on the other team. So if I can figure out who the clown is on the other team, then I'm narrowing down who 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 is on which side. So yeah, that's a really fun one. And uh, yeah, do you have any experience with this game at all, John? Or do you know do, do you know about it? You smiled when it came up, so it seemed like that might be the case. It is. It's a great game. Um, I have a, we play it every once a year, uh, whenever uh, one of my uh, friends groups gets together and we go out, rent a cabin, play some board wow. games. And it's like a annual thing where we all get together 24 people or so and fill out two rooms and have a blast. So, yeah. It's it's very interactive at, at that uh, at that level too, uh, where like with 20, 20, 30 people, then it's it's something where uh, werewolf it it uh, doesn't scale as well for for that type of thing, where it's not as interesting though, or, or in terms of uh, there's not as much going on. But yeah, so two rooms in a boom is the first one. So uh, number or, or or third on the list. So second on the list is a game called uh, Escape: The Curse of the Temple. Ah. I'm just going to leave that back there because that's big enough so you can see. So uh, this game is a, oh, is a real-time game. So that means that it is not something where it's just like, oh, it's John's turn, it's my turn, and then we go around. And then uh, it's something where everybody's doing everything at once. Everybody's rolling dice to try and go around into this. Like you can see, it's like kind of Indiana Jones themed. Uh, so Raiders of the Lost Ark, you're going into a temple trying to acquire some treasure and come out. So the way that this is modular, uh, modular is that you can add different things and try like where like you have different like uh goals where it's like hey here's more treasure right or there's a thing where it's like hey here's there's a monster that's in there too here's here's a uh here's a mummy that's trying to chase you or here here's a giant spider or here are here are some traps 
that that here here are some uh, rooms that might spring some traps, and so that varies the experience a lot. Where it goes in and kind of uh, changes things up to extent of of you know it's just like oh yeah I played Escape before yeah and it's like oh yeah that's the game that that's the game where you run away from the mummy and then and then there's a giant spider right and it's like no I don't think I don't think that's the same game and uh, yeah so for modular like, games with modular experience that's what I'm looking for where it's it's something like where similar to when you have a Drupal or WordPress site, right? When you're just like, oh yeah, I made a WordPress site once, it was a blog thing. And it's just like, oh yeah, I made one once. And it's like, so I had this giant image gallery thing. And then we had this thing that referenced that data from another place, from this one page, and then they might filled some things up. And you know, people might be like, oh, are you sure? Because uh, my, my experience with WordPress is it's a blog. And it's just like, no, it can be, it can be, it can be like a totally different thing. And uh, yeah, so this one is uh, something where I have the big box here because I really like it. But what I found is that uh, people that I play with don't enjoy the stress of a real-time game uh, and having to do things without this, like, oh, you're frantically doing stuff against a timer. And I think every game of uh, Escape lasts 15 minutes, and that's it, like, end of story. And uh, so I committed to the big box before I realized that it was super stressful for everybody else. Yeah. Uh, John, have you played this game before? Do you, were you, if so, were you super stressed? <laughs> Um, I, it, it's fun as long as your your friends are okay with failure. Then uh, it's a little less stressful and a little more of a hectic time as you're all racing and uh, trying to see if you can get there. Yeah, that's a great point. Where it's just like uh, for me, the failure is just like, oh, we lost the game, but it's 15 minutes, right? So it's like it's no huge yeah. loss. Uh, versus uh, I've been in uh, pandemic games that went on for three hours, and it's just like, oh, we at the middle point, like we probably had no chance of winning, but oh, here we are. So. <laughs> The last game that is number one on the list is something that I know that uh, I know that you've played because we played it. This is the game that we have played the most together, and that is uh, Marvel Champions. So this is a game. This is a living card game. Uh, that just means it is something where there's like there's lots of expansions, but it's not something where it's just like randomized, like uh, Magic: The Gathering or Pokemon or something. Uh, every expansion, uh, of every card deck that you get, there's an expansion. Everyone gets the same thing. And uh, this is it's good guys versus bad guys at, at, at the base level. But the way that it's structured is you pick a hero, and then you pick like one of four different aspects of like what like an area of focus. Uh, one one of them has to do with punching the bad guy. One of them has to do with uh, with foiling their 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 plans. One of them has to do with protecting other people, right? And the the villains that you're going up against are set up in a very similar way where you can kind of pick and choose and tailor like what the experience is going to be. So uh, I think that in, in the core uh, game here, the very first villain is Rhino. He is a very like, giant, he's a guy in a giant rhino suit who's a brute and goes around uh, robbing and stealing stuff. Um, but there are different uh, expansions that, that give you additional modular sets where, that you can throw in that change it up. So instead of Rhino running around the city and then smashing and, uh, uh, um, smashing and taking things, uh, he's also riding a, a goblin glider. So that's a, that's like, a, it's, it's like an air surf, surfboard that one of Spider-Man's villains has. And it's, uh, that's a silly visual, but also like gameplay wise, it changes up what, what he can do. And you mix that into his deck. And then you, every, every round you, you know, you flip a few cards that tell you what, uh, what, what uh, the, the enemies do. And there's something where like with a recent expansion that came out in, in Europe, which if you're going to DrupalCon Europe physically, uh, you could probably pick it up. It's not out in the States here yet, but it's, uh, it's something that adds uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, which is, I think most people might be, if they're familiar with Marvel movies, is, uh, is, a, is something that gives you the power of all the universe basically. And so uh, a normal bank robber with that is, it would be a totally different experience. And I think there's also an expansion that not, it, it changes the framework work in that we played against one where it's a uh, spoiler alert we fought against uh, someone called Kang Conqueror. Kang is a uh, a time traveler and at one point in the game he goes and he you're doing so well against him that he disperses you all into different gameplay areas where you can no longer interact with each other. It's normally a cooperative game and so so John and John are teaming up to defeat the rhino but Kang says nope you're too much for me you go into different places so that's similar to the, yeah, it's just like, oh yeah, I played Marvel Champions once, right? That's where you stop the bank robbers. It's just like, no, I played it once and it's it's something where like we went back in time. We went back in time and we had to reconverge. Uh, but that's the, that's the top one. It's my favorite, like, I because uh, I grew up reading comic books, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm super into the theme. I'm super into it mechanically. And then uh, as a, a loose tie end, uh, we also have a customer on the Pantheon platform who uh, streams 
gameplays of this on a regular basis. They're called Team Covenant. They're out of uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they were running a WooCommerce site that saw like incredible performance gains once they moved over to the Pantheon platform. We actually have a case study that's on our website about it. So that's something that people can can read about. So yeah, so we're not not entirely fun in games here, tying it back into work. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I also love the game. It is such a good game. Um, thank you, John, for highlighting uh, these uh, modular opportunities and uh, yeah, ways for us to think about our own experiences and, oh, hey, where can we have those modular um, opportunities on our WordPress site? Even. Yeah. And then again, it, happy to talk more about this topic to anybody. Uh, just email me at win, W-I-N, at pantheon.io. So uh, yeah, like, like winning it at board game. Yeah, John's even organized uh, board game events at different conferences uh, or digital gaming events. So um, yeah, definitely a way to mix some fun. Um, mentioned earlier, recharging um, with all the digital stress can be a great way to do that. Yeah, the next one I'm doing is actually at, uh, at DubCon. So uh, I need to get on the horse a little bit with that. We're trying to organize that. But if you want to play some uh, Marvel Champions online, uh, there's a digital adaptation of it uh, that can be played by a tabletop simulator on Steam. But happy to play a game during DevCon. Uh, yeah, if you if you are going to be in, attending that, please feel free to reach out and yeah, let's set something up and play some games. Awesome. But yeah, so uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, thanks everybody for joining us uh, for Bolts and Bytes. Uh, if you'd like to be featured in uh, our celebration segments, you should join the weekly Working Out Loud thread where we had uh, our nice tea talk. That's where that came from. And uh, if you have questions, updates, things to share, or would like to be a guest on the show and, and, and talk at length about things that you're passionate about, like I'm passionate about board games and Pantheon, then uh, reach out to us via the Pantheon community Slack. Yes. And if you enjoyed this episode, give us a like or a retweet, um, leave us a comment, share your favorite part or more of what like you would like to see. Um, and if you're looking for links to the stuff we've mentioned, including uh, John's top three modular games, uh, there will be a reply to the tweet with details. Um, and that will have a link, uh, all the different links we've been talking about. Um, and remember, you can join us here every, every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific. Next week, we'll have our special DrupalCon EU themed episode. So thanks for joining us for this J&J &J edition of B&B. &B. This is the Jays out. <laughs>